Good morning, future astronauts, and a warm welcome to Kiran Airport and Spaceport Sweden. In 10 minutes, we will be starting the boarding for your next adventure that's going to take you further than you've ever been before. So please, everyone, have your electronic passports ready, and please line up for your flight into space. My name is Karin Ilstadar. I am CEO and partner of Spaceport Sweden. And Spaceport Sweden wants to become Europe's gateway to space. And we want to provide space flights for uh, tourism, for research and product development. So personally, I've been fascinated by space since I was a little girl, and it started with the fascination of what's out there. You know, there's so much to explore, uh, and also to experience the, the feeling of weightlessness and actually seeing Earth from space. But also, the more I learn about space, I'm, I'm passionate about what we can do with space on Earth and how we can try to solve the challenges that we face on Earth and, and create a better future. So Kiruna has been an, an aerospace city for the past 50 years actually. It started with the Institute of Space Physics being established here in the 1950s. Uh, we also have the Swedish Space Corporation that run the um, S-Range, which is a, a rocket launch site uh, that also launches uh, stratospheric balloons. So we want to leverage on that experience and that background to now take the natural next step to offer commercial human space flight. So we're now in Arena Artica at Kiruna Airport and this was developed just over uh, 25 years ago and it's a, it's a site, it's a heated hangar and what we have in here for example is um, laboratories so as a scientist or as a student you can prepare your experiment then you can go flying on your space flight uh, come back, land at Kiruna Airport and come back into the hangar here and you know, disassemble your experiment and do the debrief and the data that you need to. And that in combination with the space industry makes us a complete space destination, I think, in the future. Kiruna in Swedish Lapland hosts, for example, the Ice Hotel. We have a wonderful wilderness and access to the mountains and national parks. And people come here winter time to go skiing, for example, in Riksgränsen or Björkliden, uh, but also summertime to go trekking or fly fishing. So we, we have a very rich uh, culture and lifestyle here, uh, focusing on the outdoors and, and for the adventurers. Manchmal, wenn es wirklich kalt ist, dann muss man mehr Stops machen und Gäste ein bisschen schauen, dass sie keine Frostbeulen im Gesicht kriegen. Weil also das Kälteste, was wir je gefahren sind, das war also, habe ich minus 46 Grad war draußen. Und das ist dann schon ein bisschen frisch für manche Leute. Aber muss man halt gut einpacken und dann geht es schon.
red line here shows the predicted value of the sun. is our window to space and by studying the aurora we can learn a lot about the space environment around earth and uh, how the solar wind and the particles coming from the sun are affecting us here on earth which is very important uh, today when we are so dependent upon all the satellites and gps systems and uh, other technology that can be affected by these kind of geomagnetic storms So the other instruments here on the roof, the three first ones here are cameras observing the aurora mostly and further down uh, are instruments belonging to my colleagues in the atmospheric research group. And over there we have uh, the ASCAT, uh, the European Incoherent Scattering Radar. This is the receiver that we have here, we have the transmitter up in Tromsø uh, and they're doing also ionospheric research with that. There are regions that have magnetized crust that is permanently magnetized. It's very different from the global magnetic field of the Earth. And that is very important because it, it determines the movement of dust, which is one of the major hazards for astronauts at the moment. The fascinating thing about the moon is it's like a big physics laboratory that is just so nearby in orbit. We have to go there, uh, learn how to live in such an environment, learn how to, to utilize resources. The moon is in that way uh, a starting ground for, for learning to uh, continue to explore. When I walk around in Kiruna at night, and if it's not cloudy, then I uh, often cannot avoid looking at the moon and trying to identify signatures of the, the small magnetic fields. It's actually one very strong magnetic field on the, on the side of the moon that we can see. We build everything here in this, in this house in Kiruna. So from scratch, we do put the electronics in. Uh, we calibrate them in here, so to get all the coverage, make sure that we get the right measurements, so to say. And uh, what I do is I uh, trying to predict what the instrument is going to observe. Yeah, so I'm kind of trying to be the weatherman here. <laughs> trying to predict what will happen. Four, three, two, one, seven, 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 eight, nine, six, 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 six